morning everybody we're coming live and we're going to be sensing energy this morning <clears throat> so i'm really excited about this after sensing energy um, i'm going to practice uh, with yes and no questions so i don't think we no we haven't i know that you guys have watched uh the pre-record video of yes and no uh, hello all the way over in Sweden yay UK is here now Woo <clears throat> James I'm guessing you're from the UK because I saw you use the word defo one day and I was like <laughs> UK <laughs> hi so <clears throat> why hello there Sheena Woohoo! Yeah! Mm, 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 mm. You gotta have fun in life. What's the point otherwise? Defo! <laughs> I always remember saying, what does that mean? <laughs> yeah. I remember chatting up uh, <clears throat> a lad from Ireland back in the day and he kept saying, uh, he was trying to explain something to me with a person, uh, the way that they looked. And he kept saying, ginger hard, ginger hard, ginger hard. And I was like, what does that even mean? <laughs> Took me about five minutes. We dissected it down to ginger haired, as in a red head. <laughs> I was like, uh, <laughs> Hi, Linda. Hi, David. Oh, good times, eh? <laughs> Sheena. <laughs> oh, love it. So <clears throat> we're going to be sensing energy and then we're going to move into yes and no questions. We haven't done this yet, so I'm really pumped about it. You guys have seen me talk about yes and no responses uh, or answers within the body. And so we're going to practice that today as well. So that again is just about it. All it is about is practicing and seeing what we all pick up. So I could say to you today, is it sunny outside here today? And each of you would tune into your team and let them put the answer in your body. If it's relaxed and open on your chest, that's a yes. And if it's tight and pulled back, that's a no. So that's the type of yes and, yes and no we're going to go with after we're sensing energy. And we'll see what everybody feels. It's all about practicing tuning in to your team's frequency. So many of you may not hear them at first because it does take time. It takes practice. And then many of you may not um, uh, get any visual. Some of you are. Some of you are. But if we're going based on clairsentience, which is, I think, the main one in which the populace on the planet has, although some people like to ignore it, when you get a gut instinct in the body, go in that direction. Yes, yes. Don't go there. Pay attention to that. Something's amiss here. There's a gut feeling. You can feel it in your chest and your gut. So now we're just going to use that as I think it is the strongest clair for many across the board. And we're going to practice yes and no's and see what everybody gets. It's going to be very exciting. Yes. Okay, so we have everybody coming on now. It's Monday morning and um, we are going to practice sensing energy. I don't know who's going to show up, but we're going to find out. <laughs> and then, of course, I will channel a message from whoever comes in to visit us. Okay, so is everybody ready to rumble? Let's get ready to rumble. <laughs> Sedona, Arizona. Well, I think we can say it's sunny there today, can't we? 99% <laughs> <99 percent> chance. 
<laughs> We're not going to press practice yes and no's on that one. <laughs> ah, oh, I love it. <laughs> yeah. Woo! Our own little party. Ding, ding. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> Susan, you're cracking me up. I love it. Okay. So now that we're getting ourselves too ramped up and not grounding. <laughs> okay. So let's bring in the first energy. Okay. So I get a vocal right in my head, right away, who this is. And I'm picking up on uh, if it feels masculine or feminine. And uh, where is it coming from? Is it coming from beside you, above you? Me too. That's where I'm feeling it too, right here. Many of you guys don't know this, okay? So I'm going to repeat it because you probably haven't seen this in my videos. As you begin anchoring the light within your vessel, what happens is you begin to anchor light in between the two halves of your brain, okay? It's like a light highway. Why are they doing this? I asked Archangel Michael this question many years ago when he started on me. <laughs> uh, what are you doing in my head? Uh, yeah, I like to know. <laughs> and uh, I'm so giddy today. I don't know why. And um, okay, you're, you guys are all getting female. Fascinating. I love it. It's a, this is a tricky one. So keep going with whatever you're getting there, male or female, because I'm going to fill you in here in a second. Oh, I love it. Work conference. <laughs> Um, this is really, really busy work here. I'm sorry I can't participate, everybody. <laughs> oh, that's good. And now you're going to laugh in middle work. I can't make you do that. <laughs> so what happens is you start to build this light highway in between the half, two, two halves of your brain. And it sounds like a very thin layer. Thin? Because why is it thin? It's probably about this thin at first. Okay, why is it that thin? Because that's about how much room there is to build <laughs> in the beginning. There's not much room in there. <laughs> and so what happens over time is they start to sweep you. So if you ever feel like with incoming energy, <laughs> you get a lot of energy in through the top of your head and you get like a sweeping effect, a sweeping, sweeping or you feel like there's a lot of pressure right here. Maybe you feel a lot of pressure from your third eye area and it could even expand out to your ear chakras and it can cause a real heavy head. You bet it can. And it can be like really intense right in this area as time goes on, the heavy head kind of turns more into, ooh, what's this pressure in between the two halves of my brain? And so they're building a light highway that connects your third eye back to your, what's back here? What, why are they connecting your third eye back here? Why? Does anybody know that answer? What's right back there? I know you know, Liz. <laughs> so they connect your third eye all the way through the two halves of your brain back to your pineal gland. That's right, Susan. And they light that area up like a little Christmas tree. And it's, it, goes, it, goes in, it comes in through the top of your head. It can even come in through your third eye, per, predominantly through the top though. And it just starts to sweep and build light in between the two halves of your brain, back to your pineal gland. And then the excess goes down your back, down your spine, all the way down. And as it builds, it becomes stronger. And there's times where I've had to say, hey, could you like ease that up because it's too strong in there? And they do. So what used to be this in the beginning with Archangel Michael is I would say about this now. 
Would you say that? What? He says it's this. Two fingers. Well, isn't that wonderful? You guys have worked hard to get it like that. Kudos to you guys. <laughs> He's just bowing at me. Okay. Coughing? Sheena? That's because someone's trying to talk to you. And you're feeling hot. I love it. So, Sheena, all you have to do is sit and relax and say, who's speaking with me? And let them form the words in here and up in your head. Your internal thought will form the name of who is speaking with you. Oh, yes, absolutely. It'll go in and down your back, sweeping right down your back. Yep. And the more that builds, the easier it is for them to build this light highway. And why are they doing that? So that it's easier to communicate with you. So now all they have to do is just place some, some of their energy through here or here or in the back of my head. And it's very easy for me to pick up on it because I got this light highway in my head now that they built. And, uh, and so with them building that light highway in there, it's just easier for me to pick up on what they're saying. It just makes it easier for communication. Is there any other reason why the light highway is being built in people's heads? Communication is the main reason why. Um, it's also helping in extending the light throughout your vessel it's like a it's like a constant highway of light coming in here and it sweeps here and then it comes down your back so it's it's um helping <coughs> all areas of your vessel <coughs> it's also building the light within the two halves of your brain also um helps to he's he's kind of laughing at this one uh, build the light within your mind, uh, creating high vibrational thoughts and thinking, helping you stay more level and more balanced. It's a wonderful thing. It's a wonderful blessing to have this created uh, in the two halves of your brain. And he's just smiling warmly. Um, he's saying now, for those of you who would like to have this created within your mind, uh, we will begin gently and slowly uh, building this light in order for you to easily access our information, which comes in the form of light. Okay, that's the easier term he's, he's saying. <clears throat> so it's all energy and light and it's just easier for you to pick up on their frequency and what they're saying with this light highway built in between the two halves of your brain. <clears throat> That's right. It's not Kuan Yin. Okay. And it's not Mother Mary. It's a tricky one. Okay. So I'm ready. <laughs> <clears throat> this energy just said, I'm ready too. Who's a little bit cocky? <laughs> it's not Mother Mary. Yep. So if you're heating up like a, a lot of heat, it's because we have a very strong energy here. And <clears throat> this is not an ascended master. Okay. You can ask this energy to expand its energy around you to pick up on it more easily. I'm not quite picking it up. Could you expand your energy, please? Make it more clear, please. You can do that. All right. So, um, <clears throat> now this is the tricky part. Is it a he or is it a she? W which archangels out there are known to be he or she? Because that's what we have here. We have an archangel with us. Anybody? You guys are all like, who is it? Who is known as a he or a she? I'm getting he. 
but that's how uh, I've formed this connection with this Archangel. Although many others I know see this Archangel in more of a feminine direction. Gabe! Gabriel! Yeah, you're right. Ariel, I think, is another one. Yeah, Uriel. I think you're right. Ariel and Uriel and Gabriel. And really, in truth, you guys know there, there's no sex. It's however which way you wish to, um, uh, you know, like Archangel Michael is super masculine. Uh, Gabriel is, he can be feminine or... <laughs> And <laughs> so now he's like pretending like he's a woman now. He's like this. <laughs> and he's cracking me up. Oh, I love it. Love it. Okay, so Archangel Gabriel. Woo! That was a tough one, everybody. That was a tough one. Don't feel down if you didn't get that one. When he first started coming in, it was so strong. Oh my God, my body would get so hot. And all I see with Gabriel when he comes in so fast is this brilliant white light. One time he came right in between the two halves of my brain. He came straight down, boom, right into the top of my head to communicate with a client. And I sat there like this. And the client said, are you okay? And I'm like, I, don't, I think so. <laughs> Took me a minute to get myself together <laughs> because he came in so strong into that highway. Uh, my brain just kind of went uh, like a standstill for a moment. And then, uh, oh, you got short of breath? Yeah. Oh, and he does turn it up. He really likes to work intensively with people that aren't listening. So if you are, if you signed up for a contract, if you signed up to accomplish certain things, <laughs> he's just laughing. If you signed up, now he's, and now he's looking at me like this, like, watch your words. <laughs> Uh-oh. So if you sign up for something in your lifetime and you just are ignoring and you're not going to walk that path and you're too, you're just like, I ain't doing it then that's when Gabe comes in. He's the one that gets things done. He wants to be known as the, arch, the archangel that gets things done. Archangel Gabriel. And <clears throat> so the people that I've seen really get his attention and sometimes it's pretty intense um, are people that are being guided to uh, you know, quit their job or relocate to a new location in order to help raise their vibrational frequency and they're not listening. And then Gabriel comes in and it's, it's, uh, <clears throat> it's interesting. I had one person say, I think I need to go to the hospital because I've been feeling so lethargic and tired now for four or five days. And I think there's something really wrong and I'm getting heart palpitations. I said, it's not physical. I said, you have energy that's influencing you and you're not listening. And I said, it's Archangel Gabriel. And sure enough, it was. She was also a medium, by the way, and a healer. So when she tuned in, she was like, oh, no. <laughs> and she said, yeah, I haven't been listening to my team. And I said, well, Gabriel's going to help you listen. And so he's, he's trying to slow you down. To rest and relax more instead of going into work work that's no longer fulfilling for you or no longer good for you and later <clears throat> in the month she told me she did go to the doctor and the doctor was recommending that she quit the job as well so gabriel was really on it with her hi how are you doing over there we are uh, sensing energy we've got archangel gabriel here and the message from Archangel Gabriel is, if you need me, I will come. If you want me to help you, I will show up. Do you want me to do that? I don't know. He says he's just doing this for fun. Okay. <laughs> If you want me to come, I'll show up. <laughs> if you want me to... <laughs> oh, God. And he's smirking and laughing, by the way. Okay? 
So just letting everybody know when you're dragging your heels, he's going to show up and he's going to start to help you not drag your heels anymore. He's going to work with you big time. Okay, do you want to say anything else? <laughs> he's pretty giddy today. <laughs> I like trying to hang on here. Oh my God. <clears throat> his giddiness makes me want to laugh. I'm picking up on his emotion. I can see his face. I can see what he's, and I can hear what he's saying. So, <clears throat> um, okay. <laughs> he says he's going to get serious now. So I don't keep laughing. <clears throat> all right. Ready. Okay. He says, you are all doing a wonderful job in this course. Uh, some will get it faster than others. Don't, uh, 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 just because you feel like you're a bit delayed, do not feel uh, less than, okay? Everybody will get this exactly when they are meant to in due time. Um, each of you, uh, he's explaining the same things that I've explained in the past. Each of us have our chakras open different than others. Um, some of us have some uh, <clears throat> heavier vibrational frequency that needs to be cleared. Uh, and released and just for that reason alone this course is wonderful he says even if you are not participating at all there is so much going on behind the scene and we are working on you energetically more than you realize and he's smiling with a big smile <laughs> he loves it it's like he he can just be anywhere and I mean he just it's incredible he, he's ready to go. He's rearing to go all the time. I think he's really happy because there's so many people here for him to work on. Give me a thumbs up and a wink. All right. Okay. So he's saying um, as the vibrational frequency shifts on the planet and it starts to raise in vibrational frequency as it, as it is and will continue to do so, Know that you will innately, uh, um, you will just gradually, automatically, if you want to say it that, uh, pick up on the vibrational frequency around you. So don't worry. He says, fret not, fret not. Okay, so don't worry about whether or not you're going to sense or feel the vibrational frequencies around you and communicate with them because... It will automatically, he's saying, innately occur over time as the vibrational frequency increases gradually on the planet and within each of your vessels. So it's not only just outside of you, but it's also going to be within you. He says hats off, hats off, and he's applauding you for coming into this course, for participating, for asking questions for signing up because as soon as you signed up he says as soon as you signed up it gave the okay that we were able to begin working he says on each of you and with each of you whether you participate in this course or not and he's smiling big on this one <laughs> he loves it <clears throat> he says i do love it he does love it. Yeah. Yes. Isn't that cool? Yeah, that's really awesome. <clears throat> A lot of you are shedding many layers now. He says many of you are shedding many layers, more than you even realize. He says, but I see. I see, he says. And he's pointing at his eye and he's looking at each of you, but I see. I see what's going on. Yeah. All right, he says, thank you. He says, my mission is uh, a great one of importance on this planet, on earth. And should you need me, I will come. Thank you all. Um, each of you signed up to participate in this uh, earthly life temporarily in order to first shed the dense layers and lift in vibrational frequency and rise up above it all lifting and rising up above all the fr the denser frequency here around you and surrounding you 
<clears throat> and then some of you will step forward and take it a step further and actively participate in helping the masses here on the planet, not just in this lifetime, but in many lifetimes to come based on the contracts in which you have signed, in which your souls have agreed to. Thank you, dear ones. Isn't that wonderful? Woo! Karen getting an itch in the ear. I love it. Let the itch form. Sit very still and just let it come in, into your ear, into your head, and allow it to form words in your mind. Tune out. And if you don't get it, I don't get it. Can you turn it up, please? Turn it up louder, more. I'm still not getting it. Go with the first thing you get. Don't doubt it. Don't second guess it. Don't question it. Just go with it. <clears throat> then type what you're hearing. I'd love to hear that. Okay? So type what you're hearing. You might have to t turn me off for a, a moment just to get what's being said to you. All right. <clears throat> are we ready for the second energy? The yes, we are. Where is this energy coming in from? Where are you feeling this fr vibrational frequency? Absolutely. What happens is it's not all the time. In the beginning, it's predominantly in the head, okay? Everybody thinks, oh, clear audience is outside the head. For me, that came a little bit down the line. It is your internal thought forms forming words, but you are just allowing the words. You are the still observer as the words are forming. Now, when it forms outside the head, usually I get that tickling in my ear, and they can even form words right outside my ear. Or if I get a stillness and all of a sudden I don't hear anything out of my one ear, that tells me they're right there up against my ear and all I have to do is relax as they form words right outside my ear. So in that still bubble, they will form words. <clears throat> Beautiful dream. Okay, and who is with you, Karen? Is it your guardian angel? Is it Archangel Gabriel? Pick up on the frequency, turn your face into it. Turn your face into it and say, who is this? Mm -hmm. Who is this? And then relax your mind and let them put the information into your face, basically. Okay? And it's going to go in here. 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 And you're just going to even get it. With your mind relaxed, you can get a lot of information. Mm -hmm. Okay, so this next energy. Let's ask this next energy to turn it up a little bit. Turn it up just a touch now. So everybody can really, thank you. Where are you feeling this next energy coming in around you? Which of your chakras are lighting up? Is it coming in from which direction? Perfect. You feel it in your heart? Yes, it is. Yes, it is, Magdalene. Yes, it is. Now, when we know that this is a pretty big energy... We could say it's an Ascended Master. We could say it is an Archangel. Which one is it? It's an instinct thing. You're just going to pick up on it. Is it an Ascended Master or an Archangel? This is really testing you guys now. You're getting it in your heart. Okay? Usually when I'm getting energy in through my heart chakra intensively like this, what does it tell you? Is it an archangel or is it an ascended master coming in through your heart chakra? 
Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm getting it in through the head. And my, my the back side of my heart chakra is also getting it right now. So your heart chakra isn't just here. It's also on the other side of your back. So if you're feeling it on the back side, <clears throat> cool. And I, and I guarantee he is there with you, Karen. I'm also getting your guardian angels as well. I'm getting in an ascended master. Usually ascended masters love to open up your heart chakra because it's all about the heart. It's all about love. It's all about light and love and your heart. And they're always, always trying to open your heart chakra when you bring them in. And your, if your heart chakra just starts to expand on a dime, and I mean really expand, not just a little bit, that's likely you have an ascended master around you. You getting that band around your head? That's awesome. Even if we're not getting as much as somebody else, know this, as soon as you're getting that band, all these chakra points are being opened and expanded. And that can take time. You can't just open these on a drop of a dime, can you? This isn't just going to open overnight. Neither are these, but they will gradually over time as you practice and bring in these energies. And these energies will come in and open them gradually for you. Yes. Okay, so is this a female energy or is it a masculine energy? Even you can do this. Put it in my head, please. Female or male? Allow the word to form. Allow this energy to put the word in your head. Male or female? Male or female? And this is very, it's just making it easier to discern who it is. We don't even have to really go with male or female, but this is kind of an earthly thing. It just helps to narrow it down. Okay. Yeah. So as I relax and I'm allowing this energy to form the word male or female in my head, I am hearing female female and this energy won't stop putting it in your head till you get it female she's just female 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 okay oh everybody's getting male now again you got a whole team of angels around you right so you really could be picking up on their frequency <laughs> Because we are acting as radio stations right now. We're seeing who is around us. Right? So you've got, yes, it is a very pretty face. Yes. Okay. So um, let's see here now. Tune into this frequency. I really tune into it. Let it expand and engulf you. Mm. Yeah. We know this is a female. We know it's an ascended master. We know that this female ascended master really enjoys opening heart chakras. Who is it? You can sit quietly and allow this energy to form the words within your mind. Or logically, you can say, who opens your heart chakra? Mother Mary. That's right. Mother Mary. Mm -hmm. Now, this is why it's important to practice in small amounts of time because channeling these high vibrational beings 
can cause nausea. It, it's intensive. So that's why when I'm channeling for people, I usually channel their angels and ascended masters and archangels will stop in for a brief time, but I don't typically channel them for lengthy periods of time. Once in a while I'll go live and I will channel an ascended master, but they usually kind of give me a little bit of space um, because our vessels, <laughs> our vessels um, can only take so much, especially when you're first beginning practicing. Um, so if, you know, you're getting a lot of head pressure and nausea, you may have to ask certain energies to step back. If you're getting really lightheaded and it's going on for an hour, uh, it's time for you to step back. So don't just sit there and endure. Ask the energy to step back. Call in your guardian angel. Ask them, listen, I'm feeling very lightheaded right now and I'm not feeling very good and I need you to help me here. So your angel will make those arrangements or shield you and help you feel better because you do need to function throughout the day. If it doesn't get better, then there must be really a strong reason why you are anchoring a lot of that light and love. And the second, uh, and well, not second, I'd say they're both most important, is I go right outside and I lean my back up against a tree and the tree's energy washes over me and washes any excess energy through me and anchors it into the earth. That's why I lean on a tree because the tree's energy helps me. So if you have ascension symptoms or you have a strong energy, you're very, feeling very lightheaded, nauseous, and you've made the request and it's not getting better, you're so going outside. Even if you go for a walk out in the woods or you're sitting by a body of water. But the main thing is the tree's energy will help. <clears throat> if you're anchoring a lot of light, it can really hang out in your top upper body and making you lightheaded. Whew, and that can go on for hours. So it's really important to go lean on that tree to move this energy from your upper part of your body through your body and into the earth. Really important. Really important. Isn't that wonderful? Your ears got really hot. Oof, you're just getting lit up, Karen. They're trying to get through those ears of yours so bad. That's awesome. You're literally a hair away. Okay, so Mother Mary's here and she's helping to open our heart chakras and open our ears and open our ear chakras. Yes. Oh, excellent, David. I'll tell you, um, leaning on a tree was one of the best things ever. When Ascension first started for me in 2017, whoo, if I didn't have the trees nearby, literally I'd be inside and I could hear this tree calling me out. Come on outside now. <laughs> it wanted me to come out and lean on it and help me because it knew that it needed my help. Man, Mother Mary's laughing. <laughs> so how do I know she's laughing? because I can feel her laughing. Her energy is, <laughs> and is reverberating through my body like that. And it's making me want to laugh. <laughs> All right. So the message from Mother Mary is, Dear ones, know that you are not alone. You are never alone. You never have been alone and you never will be alone. Know that you can call upon me as often as you choose and I will be there for each of you. Dear ones, know that the light and love from Source Universal oneness or God, however, which she's just listing those all off, however, which way you wish to word it, will be further anchoring into each of your vessels over the next few days. I'm seeing two days. It will intensify in the evenings for each of you as you. 
come home to rest. This light will intensify causing ascension symptoms. It is very important that when experiencing ascension symptoms to please uh, head outside, go outside, and as Kristen says, anchor, um, sit under a tree for a time. Allow the earth to move this energy through your vessel. Uh, you will sleep better and you will be able to um, feel more comfortable in doing so. There is a time coming for each of you here on the earth plane where more light will be anchoring within your vessels more than just over the next few days. As each wave of light continues to wash over the earth plane and through each of you, and she's saying it's through the earth plane. So the earth is getting all of this frequency washed through it, and so are we, okay? Know that there are many, many more to come, many, for the remainder of your journey, for the remainder of your stay here on earth. This will continue repeatedly. Um, she's saying many of us have already uh, been through this process of ascension on another planet in another vessel. So in fact, us old souls, this is the second time going through ascension here on earth. So you've done it before. Know that many things will change. Um, she's going to start listing off the things that will be changing for many of you. Your diet will change. Uh, f uh, friends, close friends and family connections may change. Your location where you are residing may change. If it is no longer a vibrational match for the vibrational frequency that is uh, shifting within you, you may need to relocate. The amount of rest that each of you will need is going to change. You will need a lot more rest, a lot more rest and relaxation. You won't be able to push yourselves as hard as you once did. Um, there will be moments where we won't be able to be as um, physical so if you're used to like really working out hard at the gym you may not be able to work out as intensively for example always follow your team's lead um, they do know what is best you can question their guidance. You can ask questions as to why they are guiding you a certain direction. However, know that they are always with you and that they have your highest and best good at heart. They love you eternally. They have been sent to look after you, watch over you, protect you, if you wish to see it in this way. They are always with you. They were created in order to look after you, watch over you, and protect you always. This is why they were created for you, for each of you. That is how special and how important each of you are in the eyes of source, light and love, universal oneness. But know this, 
know this, you are also a spark of this creator. So each of you are also creating at every given moment. What thoughts you house, what you give focus to, you create. You create. If you would like me to assist you in honing in on what you truly desire and what you would like to manifest in your reality, call me forth and I will do so. Rather than accidentally creating experiences and situations in which um, are unnecessary. Um, her assistance will help you uh, have a easier time of it and go with the flow. Okay? She'll just help you go with the flow rather than accidentally creating a whole lot of things in your life and just kind of like banging around out there with your thoughts. Oops, here we go. I'm fixating on this again and um, again, she's re reiterating what you guys already know, which is low vibrational thoughts manifest slower than high vibrational thinking. However, it is important to become the master, okay, the, the, the in, in control of what you are manifesting in your realities, okay, to master this. Yes, to master this rather than fumbling around. Okay. And for those of you who are going through difficult moments in your life experience, know that this too shall pass. This too shall pass. Mm -hmm. As Kristen says, nothing lasts forever. Oh, and she's also bringing up a saying that we say in our human experience, which is um, um, time heals all. So do not get too fixated on what is not right or what is not working out for you in your life experience. Don't hone in on it and fixate on it and continue to think about it. Um, turn your attention, your awareness away from it. Be aware of it and then turn away from it and focus on higher vibrational thoughts, that which you wish to create. If you don't like this path, start moving into a direction in your mind as to what you do want to create. Affirmations are wonderful in order to do this. Thank you, dear ones. Thank you. Okay, she says she's leaving it open for questions. Oh my God. That I did not expect. So if you have a question for Mother Mary, um, go ahead and type it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I agree, Shane. And I love to think of it this way too, like Jesus' soul, just like Mother Mary's, has been in many different bodies with many different names, many different experiences. So although I see Jesus as Jesus, I see him also as a being of light and love that is incarnated in, I don't know, at least 1,500 bodies, last he told me. So I see his soul. I don't see him as the story of Jesus and I don't feel sorry for him and I don't, I don't, you know, I don't focus in on all that. Um, Darlene is asking, am I a healer? Yes, but she's also saying that we are all healers in truth. 
okay? So we're all here to anchor the light and then emanate the light out and help raise the vibrational frequency of all those around us. Firstly, is a domino effect. As we anchor the light, we emanate the light out and influence and infect everyone in our local uh, proximity. So just in doing that, you are healing them. Uh, Darlene, she's zeroing in right in on your heart. That's where her sights are. She's fixated right in on your heart. And that's not your heart chakra, it's your heart. She'd like to work with you on your heart and heal all past wounds. So um, if you are willing to allow her to do that, she would like to do that. And that will help to open and expand you further to anchor even more light and healing, healing all aspects of yourself and then emanating the light further. All you have to say is, yes, please. Christine is wondering, um, she's in a very 3D work environment and should she leave it right now? So there's resistance. You can, uh, you can see that with that question. Should I leave this work right now? And I get resistance. Like I get, um, it's kind of like a, in my chest. It's not fluid. She says you're kind of stuck between a rock and a hard spot. Okay, right now. But that's just right now, Christine. That's not going to be forever. Remember that, okay? No matter what is going on right now, it's not going to last forever. So, what are we going to do with Christine's work then? Give it time to shift and change, please. Allow me to uh, work on this with you. Uh, stay in this position um, and hold steady. Uh, try to keep as balanced as you possibly can. Okay? Try not to get your feathers ru ru ruffled. Your feathers ruffled. And she's going to start working behind the scene of your life. And she will help manifest another path for you. Okay, Christine? Your team's already working on this with you. But she's going to step in and assist your team. That's going to be really good. Yep. I don't see the path... She's not showing that to me. She's going to get busy and start working with your team on another path for you, Christine. She'll get busy and get to work. She knows that you don't want to be there much longer. It's uh, no longer a vibrational match for your vibrational frequency being there. And that's no longer good for you. Hang in there. Stay there, and she will start working behind the scene of your life and bring something else into fruition. She will help manifest something in with you. Um, how you can help her, Christine, is by speaking with her often, handing off fears, worries, doubts to her in the moment, in all areas of your life, okay? That's your homework, Mother Mary wants you to hand this anything that's really bothering you, any worry or fears about anything to her. And then that will lighten you up, free you up, and help you uh, be a vibrational match for what is to come. Okay? So your homework is to hand off all fears and worries as they come up in your mind repeatedly. And I would take that very seriously with Mother Mary. Very seriously. Thank you, dear one. Thank you, dear one, she says to you. Shane, feel a deep connection with Mary. Have any of us been with her when she was here on earth? 
She says she has her eyes, her sights set upon you, Shane. Here we go. Have you um, had any incarnations with Shane? Um, in Pleiadian lifetimes, she knew of you. Um, not here on earth. Not here on earth. No. But as a Pleiadian, yes. Um, I feel like... Okay, so, so the Christ consciousness energy is here to help the earth. What does that consist of? So we, we would have um, Jesus, Mother Mary, Mary Magdalene, and you could maybe say that that is like a Christ consciousness family. And there's other beings, Saint Germain, okay? And they're all, and they're all working with each other. It's not just this energy of the Christ consciousness. But I feel like the Christ consciousness family energy is working with you, Shane. And I'm getting a thumbs up on that. Okay. They're getting you ready. They want you to step forward and walk a certain path. Okay. And they're getting you ready for this. And they're really releasing, helping you release and cleanse yourself. That's the first step, okay? And also, you have to want it. You have to want to walk this path more than anything. Oh, boy. She's using me as an example now. Why? Why is it always me? <laughs> Can't we use Alyssa? <laughs> No, because Lisa hasn't been through this. Oh, God. All right. So here we go. We're going to delve into Kristen and her private life. Here we go. <laughs> she says it's not that private. <laughs> okay. So she's going to use me as an example. And the example is um, with me, my health uh taking a turn is what shifted me onto this path. I couldn't keep abusing my body on this path with intake or consumption of substances. So my health forced me onto this path, which was actually a blessing. And I agree with her. And But with you, it's still up in the air as to which direction you're going to take. Um, so this is what she means by you have to want it. You have to want. Um, okay, do you want to explain that a bit more? You have to want what is best for yourself. You have to want to take care of yourself and focus on self-love within yourself. Self-love is the most important thing uh, for you to give focus to right now. Um, she is showing me a mirror. So mirror means you stand in the mirror and you're going to do this twice every day. Twice. And you're going to look yourself in the eye and you're going to say, I love you. Out loud. And... Um, she's, she's chuckling a little bit because she knows that it's going to be uncomfortable. Um, and this is actually something that we can all do, but for Shane, this is the guidance she's giving for you. And so when you say, I love you in the mirror, it's really uncomfortable at first. I didn't mean it. I was just saying the words when I did it, my angels asked me to do this about 15 years ago. And I was like, yeah, okay. I love you. Mm hmm. Yeah. <laughs> Whatever. But what happens is when you look in the mirror in your eye and you keep saying it, even though it's uncomfortable and you may not feel it, you actually, by verbalizing it, are manifesting it into being. So it's a little catch-22. So every time you look in the mirror, twice a day, 
every time you're near a mirror, this is your opportunity to look yourself in the eye and say, I love you, in order to shift your vibrational frequency and to manifest it into being. And that is what is most important for you right now. She's saying, thank you, dear one. She's actually saying it's an honor to work with you. It's an honor to be there with you and work with you. That's deep. <clears throat> Karen, to open your heart for love, does this often mean that we need to open our hearts to love ourselves more? Um, she says it's setting the intention. It is, at times, if one does not feel it, doing the mirror work. It is taking good care of one's vessel. These are all steps in self-love. She's not going to put it on a chart and measure how much one loves themselves in comparison to other, others. If you wish for myself or... Um, any other being of light and love, any other ascended master to help you with self-love, you can call them forward as well. It's about in the moment, in every given moment of every single day, giving thought to how best to take good care of yourself and love yourself. And if you don't feel that way and you feel as though you are to self-sabotage yourself by way of treating your body poorly, having low vibrational thoughts, having low vibrational thoughts about others, it is time to go inwards. It is time to focus on self-love. With self-love, you... Uh, you won't give thought to low vibrational thoughts about others or yourself. You'll, it'll be less so, okay? It's not going to flip overnight. But if you're having low vibrational thoughts about others or rotating in your head and there's a, there's that density, then we're moving in the direction of self-love. And you can do that with affirmations, mirror work, calling her in and asking her to help you do that. Was Liz feeling sources? Yes. I don't even, I can't even get the full question out. <laughs> yes. I sure was too, Liz. I was sitting on the couch getting blitzed. <sighs> I was hanging on by a thread. We were anchoring light last night and it was coming in through my chest and my stomach and I was like, deep breath. Oh my God, that went on for a few hours. I was wondering if I was even going to sleep last night. Okay, great opportunity, and I'm lost about a question. That's okay. You just call, just ask her to call her, call her in to help you. And, and that's really, Mother Mary, anything, anything, guidance I need? Uh, David, any guidance for David? She's just warmly smiling at you. It's making me smile. Thank you, David. You are a blessing. You are a walking blessing upon this earth plane. Your presence being here on the earth is a great blessing to the earth herself and to all that inhabit this planet. She says, do not forget that. Do not sway. Do not sway. She says, do not sway from this path. This path. She's talking about you have a few things to accomplish here uh, in your life experience. And they are um, going to be coming before you. 
Um, okay, let's see what they are. Let's see if she'll show them. They're, they're like lined up. They're, they're set up for you to come into your life experience. Like they're already lined up. You don't have to do anything. They're just automatically going to come on your path. They're, gonna, they're already ready for you. It's like, uh, it's like um, you can look at them like a, a project of, um, I see you helping others. Hmm, I'm really trying to delve in there. It's like someone's going to come into your life and you're meant to help them. But they're also going to help you too. She's smiling warmly. I see this happening in like the next. I'm getting like the next year. Yes, that's correct. The next year. There are certain things that are lined up to come on your path coming. And they'll be very highlighted. You're not going to miss them. They're going to be like really amplified and your team's going to be like, you're not going to miss it. This isn't your first time here on earth. You've been here many times before and she's really looking forward because she's got her eye on you. Okay. She's saying that she's got her eye on you and she's looking forward to seeing how you do on this path with these uh, uh, events coming up on your path and she'll be watching you when it when it all transpires love it and she's clapping isn't that awesome David oh my god she's watching you and she's looking forward to seeing how you do it's not like we do good or do bad, she says, to any of us. There is no this or that. They're always cheering us on, but it is up to our own free will in this free will zone. That's why we chose to come here in this life experience to learn and grow. So it's just a growth experience. It's a growth opportunity. There's no, oh, you did bad or good. It's just a, a, a growth experience, okay? Ooh, Nancy, what star family does Nancy come from? Syrian. You've had a few lifetimes as a Pleiadian. And then you've come to Earth. Predominantly Syrian, Syrian, Syrian. This is what they do to me, okay? Syrian. Syrian, Syri <laughs> so they will just repeat, repeat the answer until you get it and they'll just do it over and over and over and over Syrian, a fuse Pleiadian and then earth human. Awesome. <laughs> That's awesome. Okay. So Darlene, she hears you. Oof, James, how many lifetimes has James had? 1,400, like myself. So they don't just give me 1,400. They know that I know I'm sitting around 1,400. This is always in flux, by the way. By tomorrow, it might be 1,450. <laughs> because all of our lifetimes are happening at once and our soul is in all the bodies at once there is no linear time okay um, so in this moment of now it's 1400 and then they'll say similar or like myself so then I really get the message so 1400 and in my experience when you're sitting around 1400 to 1500 uh, then you, that is an old soul at least in the eyes of coming here to earth and other planets at this point um, G I asked Jesus have you had 1500 lifetimes because I had seen it elsewhere and he says yes approximately at that point point." and I said well that's only a hundred more than me and, and he said it's not the 
quantity of the lifetimes, Kristen. It's the quality. <laughs> it's like, yeah. <laughs> I was like, awesome, Jesus. That was awesome. Yes, that's true. So true, isn't it? Um, James, your guardian angel's coming in. And your guardian angel saying that you've enjoyed, um, you've enjoyed your lifetimes here on earth. It's been a real learning curve for you. <laughs> but you've done really well in many of your lifetimes. And in this lifetime. Um, what does your guardian angel consider doing really well? Uh, when there are difficult moments in life, you experience those difficult moments, but you get up from them. You, you can even thrive from them. You see the, you see the opportunity of learning and growing from the experience rather than being stuck in the experience and being woe is me, beating yourself up. There was a time where there was some of that going on, but now you've kind of got yourself up out of that. And you've learned and you've grown immensely here. They're really happy. They're saying they're really happy with the decision that you made to incarnate here on earth. Because I think they were waiting to see if that would be a good decision for you or not. But they are in agreement that this has been a good decision for you. Isn't that amazing, James? <laughs> They're laughing and clapping. They're all laughing and clapping. Mm -hmm. And you will continue to thrive here for the remainder of your lifetime here. This course is a great stepping stone for you to release that which is no longer needed to see that there is far more far more and that you can there's oh, they're saying like five sentences at once i'm trying to get okay so there is far more out there than just what is on the other side of the tip of your nose in the 3d experience okay firstly and that you um and that you will continue to be um, far reaching you will continue to grow and stretch yourself and it will be far reaching for the remainder of this lifetime do you see the wording that they use far reaching you will be far reaching in your growth here on earth I would never use that wording but they like that wording isn't that fascinating they're just, they're just looking at me laughing. <laughs> That's the verbiage that they choose. Um, they're talking about you uh, being in a location or an area on the planet that isn't always high vibrational in nature. And yet you chose that in order to test yourself further here on Earth. And you're doing a good job. You are not sinking uh, along with others around you in vibrational frequency. You might dip from time to time, but you always get back up and you are higher vibrational. You are higher vibrational than others in your, in your area. And you help lift the vibrational frequency of others in your area as well just by being you, by being the bright light that you are. They need you there, James. They need you there in that location. <laughs> now they're laughing. <laughs> Isn't that awesome? Oh my God, James, that was awesome. They have their eye on you. Always. They say that uh, if you want to call upon them to help you to do so, but um, 
you're really mastering this, you're getting it. You call upon them from time to time, but you got this. <laughs> wow. Oh, yeah. Hand it all off to Mother Mary. She can take it. She'll take it and she'll transmute it into the light. Hmm. Ooh. What's happening with or Aura Bell when she is awake and then tuning into something where she doesn't have any control of her body? E okay, Aura Bell ready? Boundaries. 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 Okay? Boundaries. There's times where you're really open and you're just kind of going with the flow and you're just allowing whatever. This all stems back to going within yourself and focusing on self-love and not allowing other energies to into your space. Mm -hmm. Boundaries. Um, when we're emitting a certain vibrational frequency, it's like a signal that is sent out. Um, so they're going to, they're going to use me as a, <laughs> they're going to use me as an example. My, the, the energy that I'm emitting and my boundaries are, I'm just going to copy you. Go ahead. I know what my boundaries are, but I just want to hear you say it. Uh, <laughs> Okay, so my boundaries are you're not allowed in my space unless it is approved by my bouncer and he's right over there. Okay, number one. Uh, this is my space and you may not enter it. Okay, number two. Um, only beings of light and love are allowed to be around me or enter my space. Mm -hmm. You may not walk the threshold of my entranceway unless you ask first and it is approved by myself and Archangel Michael. Boundaries. Um, I don't know if you're doing astral travel or you're interacting with energies, or you're kind of giving off this energy of uh, like, hey, let's have fun. I don't know what this is, um, but you need to get a, a wrap on it and have some boundaries. Um, you know, communicating with spirit is enjoyable and fun, but with the right ones. And I ain't up for, hey, you know, like you, you have to know, A, who you're talking to, B, who is that? And, and you have to know what you're doing, I suppose, is my guidance there. I don't know if that resonates with you, but it's all about boundaries. Anything else on that? Um, call upon your team to clear out any unwanted energies that are running amok. And do that now. And then do that frequently for a time. Um, and then this will help you ground back into your body more. And then that will help you become more level and balanced. And focus inwards on self-love. There's a difference between searching outside of yourself for love from others, someone to love me, and then you will get that love fulfilled. But they would rather you turn within and focus inwards on self-love. That's what's most important, self-love, okay? Very important. That's the lesson for you. That is the lesson, yeah? Yeah. I can feel, I can feel uh, some release happening from you now. 
you're releasing. There's some sadness there and it's releasing. Yeah. Self-love. You know, it was easier for me, Orabel, because my mom raised me and my two sisters and she raised us to be very independent, strong women. Um, you know, she raised us this way and I am forever thankful of that. Forever thankful. It doesn't mean that I haven't had moments in my life, but it's always been embedded on in me that you need to take care of you and love yourself and and hold your boundaries with others and that's with people in the physical and people and then and then spirit in the non-physical there's there's no difference don't step up in my space but at the same time keeping high vibrational and keeping in um, a vibrational frequency of self-love so that you don't attract those energies to you yeah it's all like attracts like. Um, or if you're sending out a signal that says, uh, uh, you know, party over here, then we need to say uh, boundaries and my, my bouncers here. And no, no more of that. All right. So, ooh. Oh my gosh, Ursula, you must just be the honest lucky. Those kids are so lucky to have you. My God. Is there any other opportunities opening for Ursula coming out? <laughs> They're just laughing. <laughs> I don't know what that means, but I'm taking it as a good sign. Don't you worry about a thing. <laughs> That's what they're saying, Ursula. Your angels are like, don't you worry about a thing, Ursula. It'll come to you. What is next? It'll come to you. Okay? So you don't have to worry about anything. Your team's got it. Okay, so I think that it's time to practice with Shane. And I'm going to bring you on with me now. Mm hmm. Okay, so we're waiting for Shane. And yeah, yeah, me too. I got a lot of warmth when it was with Shane. Like a lot of warmth, like you're on the edge of doing something pretty significant. And it's not just in this lifetime, but it's in a series of lifetimes coming forward. I asked my team, I said, uh, oh, actually, I think I asked Jesus. I said, how many more lifetimes am I going to do on earth? And he says, about 2,000. What? And he said, it might be 2,500. I'm like, what? <laughs> what? <laughs> Did I misunderstand this situation? <laughs> but apparently my soul is signing up for a long-term situation here on Earth. And I feel like Shane's is on the precipice of the same. <laughs> Lucky Shane. Okay, so let's answer some more questions. All right. Beth. Any question, any guidance for Beth? Mm, she wants you to ask a specific question, Beth. There's a few things that uh, may come to the topic, come to your mind. Just let them come to your mind because I think she wants to talk to you about something specific. So I'll let you go ahead and ask that. Mother Mary, do you have any guidance for me? Again, if you have a specific question, why is it that I say a specific, she's even saying it, I'm not just the only one saying it. It's because they want to hone in on your specific question. If it's a vague question, you'll get, yeah, you'll get some vague, more of a vague response. They want to help you with something specific. There's more power to that too. Oh, can you help me with something? Versus I have this in my life and I need help with it. Do you see the power behind it? Oh my God, you've been doing a course in miracles, James? Jeez Louise. Whew. My God, man, no wonder they're, no wonder. That makes total sense now. 
Okay, I'm going for specific questions. Oh yeah, Lori, you just talk to Mother Mary in your head or out loud and she'll be there to help you with anything. You know what I do? I just say, Jesus, I'm open to you helping me with everything. <laughs> Please. And if I really need help um, lifting my vibrational frequency, say I'm like having a hard time, I basically say, uh, Jesus, well, actually, he asked me to do this. And I was like, why am I going to do this? And he says, because then I can anchor my light in with your energy and I can help you more so. And it will actually, and Aurabelle, I think this would be really good for you. What Jesus asked me was um, for me to ask, could you please um, come into my heart and into my soul? And so as soon as you ask that, Jesus will infuse his light and love in with your energy in your vessel. And it will really help to lift your frequency. He also said that it helps to emanate out his light out of you. And it, um, it will basically, um, no, nothing low vibrational will really want to be in your proximity because it really doesn't want to be around Jesus' energy. So everything heavier will be, it just won't want to be around you, okay? Or any energies that are running amok or any energies that are not there for your highest and best good, okay? So that's really important. Okay, I'm going to answer a few more questions. Okay, so what star family is Lori from? I'm getting... Uh, I'm getting, Lori, that you're a younger soul, meaning you've had, um, well, what's 900 lifetimes? I mean, that's still a lot, Lori. <laughs> okay, so how many lifetimes has Lori had? 800. It's still a lot. But that would be, you know, a soul that's still new to this, still, you know, still figuring some things out. Won't be long until you're... you're uh, at 15, 16, probably 2,000 by next, you know what I mean? Like, it's all relative. There's no linear time. So, Lori, where is she originated from as far as um, the, the vessels that she's inhabited? You've had some lifetimes uh, with the elementals. Okay, so I'm seeing fairy lifetimes. Yeah. Elemental lifetimes, yeah. Big time. Strong. It's really strong and it's hit me right in the face. Um, I feel like you have some fairies around you helping you. Yes, you do. How many do we have? <laughs> Shouldn't have even bothered to ask that question. <laughs> okay, so the main... You have many, 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 many. But the main fairies that are, are um, uh, with you... Uh, here the the ones that you've had lifetimes with if you want to call them lifetimes I don't even know if you're in a vessel it might have just been energy um, these energies there's three of them here helping you oh my god that's so cool so three fairy energies but you've got a whole lot of other fairies helping you all the time so Lori do you ever get like a tickle on the arm or on the forehead or down on the ankle and you don't know where it came from. It's kind of like a, like a wisp, boop, or a boop, or in your hair, or a boop. If you do, that would tell me you've got some fairies with you. Yeah. Oh my gosh, James, that's so incredible. Wow, James. You're so welcome. Isn't that amazing? Okay. Moving down, moving down, looking for Lori. Yes. Oh, it's like I knew, it's almost like I knew how many lifetimes you wanted to know about. Hey, Lori, and I just asked and I didn't even see your question there. That's amazing. Okay. So, Lori, you got some fairy action happening here. A lot of it around you. <laughs> and where else are we going with Lori? It's really fairies. Has it been anything else? Earth and human. Anything else? No? 
That's so unusual, Lori. So unusual. Usually it's like, okay, some lifetimes as a fairy, Arcturian, Pleiadian, then Earth. But it's like fairies and Earth. And I'm getting a thumbs up. Is it only fairies or any other elementals that she's kind of checked out? <laughs> They're laughing. Like, almost like they, they know I know the answer. Because I knew it wasn't just fairies. It's such a strong elemental energy. <sighs> My God. They're not going to tell me. They're stonewalling me. You know what that's like? You're looking and they go like this. <laughs> and I'm like, where is it? And they won't tell me. I can see. I can see. Okay, so um, you've got many fairy lifetimes and you've got Earth. Now, were these fairy lifetimes on Earth? Other planets. And you started out in fairy lifetimes on Earth. Holy Hannah. Okay, so what are some characteristics, Lori, of... Okay, well, there you go. You get that all the time on you. Oh, man, so do I lately. It's driving me nuts. On my ankle, on my face, over here. <laughs> Try to create... But if you're having heavier thoughts or you're watching a low vibrational program and you start to get that, it's the fairies are around you and they are trying to transmute the heaviness from the program that you're watching. It could be the news, it could be a movie, it could be a TV show, or they're trying to transmute the heavy thoughts in your head. So the fairies are working on you and they're trying to transmute this heaviness. Okay, and um, wow, you know what, Lori, that many of the fairies inhabit on a Pleiadian planet. So I can see why you're drawn to Pleiadian because you probably have had a ton of lifetimes as that energy on the Pleiadian planet. I just have never seen anyone only as a fairy and then Earth. So what are some of the characteristics of a fairy lifetime? Um, really good at multitasking you want to do this then you want to do that you want to be active you want to have a I mean for me <laughs> I can speak for myself I had a pretty active social life um, drinking was involved um, just really you know just um, your mind and you want to have fun and you know like a fairy you're flitting all over the place you can handle many different things at once because you're able to multitask a lot um, so that's giving you an idea, okay? If you feel like it's hard for you to ground yourself and your mind is going and you feel like you're kind of out of your body, likely that's also needed. A lot of grounding. A lot of grounding, Lori. <laughs> so I hope that resonates with you. Okay. Oh, good. So that does make sense to you. Yeah, the flitting around makes sense. Yeah. If it's hard to be grounded and present and have, like, another way that you know you're not grounded is you, you're, you have a hard time remembering things. 